Hey there, and welcome to work to game the channel where two guys play video games just enough it shouldn't quite alarm you and share the results with you here. Hey Chris, I'm a little stuck on something. Can't you guys just put up a guide so I can get back to playing? To that I say no, we have to have a tiny little discussion about how much people are spending on things that they don't even play with. And I'm talking about the fact that gamers not only buy games, but also the things that surround that, all the merchandise, and actually that overlaps a lot with the sci-fi and all this other awesome stuff. And this week, an unopened copy of Super Mario sold for $30,000, as well as a few other games selling separately for $11,000. And has this happened before? Oh yes. Gamma Attack for Atari 2600 is worth an estimated 20 to 50,000, and a Pokemon card of Pikachu actually sold in 2015 for 150 grand. And we can keep working our way up to higher and higher amounts of money, but to put an end to it, I think the Action Comics number one selling in 2014 for 3.2 million really takes the cake. And gaming and sci-fi are not new. They've been around long enough now that they have fan bases who remember things from long enough ago that they're rare and actually are old enough to have the jobs to put the money towards them and really drive that value up. So then the question is, how much is too much to spend on a collectible? Well, let's get some context. Gaming as a whole brought in $83.6 billion in 2014, so 3.2 doesn't really seem like that much. 13.1 billion of that revenue is actually from US retail sales, Call of Duty topping the list that year. And it's also the year, just to kind of refresh your memory, that Flappy Bird came out and was later pulled because the developer thought it was too addictive. And to put that in more useful terms, the average American family had 2.6 people per household and actually brought in just under $52,000. And in less useful terms, Sharknado released that year and has brought in less than half a million to date. So breaking that down, that's just under $20,000 per person being brought in in the year of 2014. Take 3.2 million, do the math, and you actually have 160 people's worth of resources being put towards the purchase of a single comic book that will never be read, opened, or enjoyed in a traditional sense. And this comic book was first printed in 1938 for 10 cents, and 10 cents in those terms adjusted for inflation is actually $1.66. So $1.66 to $3.2 million, that's quite a bit of an increase. So the question is, why did it go up so much in value, and why is it estimated to continue to rise at a rate much beyond inflation, or any value that it's bringing directly to society in terms of like production or anything like that? And more importantly is the question that most people ask anytime they hear about a purchase like this, and it's just, why? Well, Cyrus told us a long time ago that something is worth whatever somebody will pay for it. So the question then becomes, if it's not about money, is it about emotions? And if so, what makes this worth that much of my resources? Well, games, just like any other collectible, are not considered timeless because they remain relevant or that they're continuing to contribute in a traditional sense, but because they are so quintessentially of their time. Just like paintings in museums or statues or anything else we value, they are so much an essence of what that year was to us, either as individuals or as society, that they're worth holding on to. It's the same reason people collect baseball cards, stamps, marbles, whatever you may collect. Video games is, of course, included in that list. And psychology and getting all into that Freudian stuff kind of teaches us, not that I'm an expert on the desire to kind of collect things and hold on to them, resources just like food. So that's things like your baby blanket or, you know, a video game that you cherished when you were a kid. And you're going to want to hold on to that because it gives you comfort. And I believe a lot of people collect because it's a way to go back. It's absolutely a way to take you back to a time that was simpler, where you had less responsibilities and not anything had gone wrong in life. And you definitely want this to kind of remind you of that. I don't really remember what I had for lunch yesterday, but I do remember these key moments in my life. And sometimes a possession can take you back to that point. And I think there's people out there that definitely want to hunt just for the thrill of the chase. The idea of finding something rare, going out there and digging through people's garage sales. And those are the people who probably have an easier time selling it when that time comes because they that part's done for them and they want to go ahead and just get the resources from it. Maybe they even make money so that they can go on and hunt the next thing. And the last good reason I've heard of collecting is that they just want to collect a set, right? This desire to complete things we even see in marketing with things like fast food chains saying, oh, you got to get the whole set. And so I think there's a lot of people who is like, wow, you know, this video game was part of a series, this, this finite series. Like maybe I want to collect all the games that I had as a kid or all the games that came out in a certain year or for a certain console or a certain comic book series. And most of the time collecting is seen as a positive thing. Of course, then you talk about hoarding. And while collectors are often neatly organized and cataloged and at least given enough time could be expected to go find something, hoarders are actually on the verge of being pathological. It's obsessive on the border of being 
being considered a disease many times and actually is getting in the way of their daily life. And you have to wonder at that point, if you're hoarding things like comic books or whatever, are they even being well protected? Are you even protecting any value there? Or are they just slowly getting damaged by moisture that you can't see? So if the amount that it's costing you to buy and maintain whatever it is you collect is not getting in the way of your daily life, is there anything wrong with it? Well, the people we're talking about here are not going broke doing it. We're talking about Metropolis Collectibles, which was founded in 1984 by Stephen Fischler, who actually is credited with creating the very system that is used to rank the value of comic books today. It's a business based out of New York City that generates hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. And they'll one day part with it, sure, when they're willing to give up the bragging rights and the marketing of having it. And they'll part with it to a collector that ranks right among the same resource level as the people who already own one of these. One of them was owned by Nicolas Cage, who actually got his copy stolen, but that's a whole other story that might get spun off into a movie one day. Hope that would be cool. So then where's the line in a budget? Well, many financial planners, just to simplify that, break things down into 50% goes to essential needs, most of which is like rent and food and all that. 30% goes to just fun stuff, which is what we're talking about here, and the remaining 20% goes off to savings. So of that fun budget, that's things like buying nicer clothes than I really need and going out to movies and going on vacations and buying games. So I don't think that the average person makes enough where that 20% is ever going to add up to buying million dollar comic books. But it does allow you to buy some pretty cool things. So where do you guys think the line is? Is there a line where people are spending too much money on this that it's just a waste, it shouldn't even be done? Or does it even matter? Do you just say, yeah, let them do whatever they want, it's their money. Just wonder what you guys think. If you could let us know in the comments below, Brian and I would love to hear back from you. Anyway, I just thought this was a fascinating topic to think about. Hope you guys are having a fantastic day. This has been Chris with work to game and I will see you next time. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you want to check out any other videos, <laughs> you should click over here. <laughs> and then we've got uh, like some kind of vlog thing down here in the corner. <laughs> and then we've got like subscribe. Have you get, yeah, like that's really, you should totally do it. This was a complete <laughs> disaster. <laughs>